why he sees abilities and strategies, but others are doing it. So we call them up and say, how do you get people to come? How are you cracking that nut if they're doing it? Right. We don't need to well, learn what they've learned through, right. you know, trial and error. So, well. okay. Um, the bar is low for the objective on events, like the one last night. What's, what's not low is the combined attendance. But there, we there were 10 people here last night. They, I wish there were 30. I didn't know anything about it. Well, there you go. And it goes back to the early communications on what they need to be. It was a lovely presentation, and I really enjoyed it. There's something, everybody can stream content, but there's so much nicer to be in the presence of somebody who knows this topic, and you're relating to other people, and you're connecting to neighbors, and I think this is something the library should be doing better. Somebody remind somebody to let me know when those things are coming up, because I'm an idiot, I'll admit it. I was at the office on Thursday, like, racking my brain. It's time to take down the new phone books out here. <laughs> Where do you put something new on the sign? You couldn't put that up? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Better coordination books. So. Yeah, yeah. That's certainly for a place for events. We don't have to, we don't have to put photo events up there, because there's signs right there. <laughs> That's so much easier to read. Yeah. <laughs> But that was a slide. like that. Yeah. Oh, people pay a lot more attention if the content changes. Yes. Right? Yeah. It becomes a saying, it's invisible. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So that's what we, and I think that that's, a, we've already, I think we're going to do the astronomy night on the 16th, and it's our first collaboration with, with the rain date for the 17th, our first collaboration with the rec committee. I, I'm excited about this, so I'm just taking this. <laughs> um, Rick's going to give his presentation at the Snack Shack. Um, so there's power there, and, there's, you know, mm -hmm. that, and then we'll move out into the field with the library telescopes and a couple of hours to do studies. And so that's a great combined rec committee library mm -hmm. event. So, okay. At the 16th? I believe so. Saturday. Yeah. So, again, um, Kate is already set to start monthly story time and they can take programs at the library. But, you know, it's going to require going back to optimizing operating hours. Can we do that during the time when the library's open for circulation? It's a shame not to because when kids are at story time, you want them to take books on right? sure. yeah, yeah. So that, that again shows, and that will show up, talk about cross-referencing. That'll show up in our facility assessment. You know, this is a popular program, but it's really making it hard for people who want to use the library quietly, mm -hmm. which it will. Mm -hmm. That's an issue that we need to document. Is that the director slash volunteer? <clears throat> okay, and this is the story time could be a volunteer. The, the actual story time, yeah, could be a volunteer. And then so the world could see what it does. So responding to you, um, Cindy, you said, where'd you come up with these numbers? Well, yeah. I float them by Kate. I want them to be achievable. I want to say, I bumped that one up because I really like it to be more. Okay. So, okay. okay. Um, and I added back in Earth Day. Oh. Most of the stuff in here is new stuff, but because I wanted to get a sense of what the programming was shaping up to, I added in the Earth Day cleanup, which was quite successful this year, which we do again. This is what I added. Um, actually, for the grant on the summer program, mm -hmm. can you put photo in? Because it should be photo yes. rec committee. Who else? Might be interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. She talked about doing on me. Who did? Did I do Oh, talked about maybe doing milestone lessons next year. If that complained okay. to a camp. Yeah, I mean that's why I said summer program. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My my feeling, I, I would really like to see something that's multiple weeks and sure. have people take over parts of the day, so that it's not one person mm -hmm. doing like all yeah. the things. Right. And I think you know the, the library um, add on to that would be for 
there to be a, a lifelong learning component to the kid, mm -hmm. not just rec, but no. what kind of topic that they're not getting at school you can introduce, or some kind of arts-based thing, mm -hmm. and that's the library contribution. Yeah, and it's so easy to tie in a children's book with a craft. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's a great collaboration. Yeah. So I added this one in red. Just gonna let that sit with you and see what you think. Okay, I have a news about this. Okay. Our school district has a serious problem with the length of the bus rides. A huge problem with the length of the bus rides. Um, and I was thinking that it might be nice, and I have no idea what the logistics of this are. Um, so I am speaking with no knowledge at all. But I was thinking it would be great if we could get a grant funded program to fund a bus that goes directly from IRS, the middle school, uh, IRS, the high school, and CES, and goes straight to one place. Like the library. Like the library. Sure. Or whatever. Because my kids are spending over an hour on the bus. Each Is it because of the uh, lack of drivers, or is it just all over the world? I mean, I think <coughs> the regular route. The regular route is just here, right? <laughs> yes, really sure. Sure. Some, of the, some of the routes are yeah. really bad, but yeah. M10 is not that bad. But like, uh, Heidi Miranda's, mm -hmm. her kid was, the bus showed up at 5.50. Oof. Wow. Like, yeah. couldn't even take mm -hmm. his meds. Oh, I got it, yeah, because it's just too early. Yeah. So I would really like to solve that problem for people who choose. I think that would be amazing. It's a huge problem. Well, it's a library problem. Mm -hmm. It's a library problem. If it's a place for them to go. And just corral 40 kids. How many kids? Not that many, 40 kids. solve the problem, I think that it could give the library, uh, I mean, a, another purpose. But you end up with the same problem with Grafton being so dispersed. How do you choose that central point? I'm in West Grafton, uh, you know, and so there are the people who are off of 4A and things of like that sort. Their kids are also riding the buses for a long time. So how do you prioritize, or how do you decide who's going to get that special service? And I, I mean, I think it's an, it's, they have to decide to do it. You know, they don't want to do it. It doesn't make sense for them. But what would end up happening is that, like, for example, my kids would go, well, it takes that stop off of the bus list. Sure. And so it decreases the amount of time mm -hmm. people after us are on the bus. But I agree with Andrew. Is that really a library problem? And, and, and I just want to, being the naysayer of the morning, <laughs> um, I think that's a pretty complicated problem. Because you have to have a driver. Then you have to have a substitute driver. Well, I think I would have a Well, I think actually, if you, oh. if you came up with a place for that to happen, why would you even need to have a separate bus route just to tell the school district? These kids go that's, And that's why, yeah. 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 Well, except I don't know how long that happens. I mean, part of it is what it, is the length of the bus ride, is what I would think. Yeah. Part of what I'm trying to shorten. Right. Um, but if you drop a certain number of kids off at the library and those stops were eliminated, right. if you conflated two right. stops into one stop, exactly. that right. shortens it. Right. So, so it's it hard to Yeah, and I, I don't know what the logistics are. I don't know if it's even possible, but it, as far as it, it gets at that. Well, there's some, there's some overlap with this, yeah, right. but you know, and I think it's a great idea. I, I'm not sure I want to fold it into this. Not necessarily, but I, I just wanted to. But but you've planted the seed, so, and, and there could be there could be some connection with this if we decided this were possible. Some kids might come, and that's the afternoon where it's homework afternoon, and stay mm -hmm. and do it, and their parents come a little later for them. There could be overlap, but. The whole bus thing, I, I sort of hate to fold into this plan. No, I don't think it should be folded into this necessarily. But I raise this because, not because the townspeople were saying they wanted, and it isn't homework help necessarily. That didn't come up on the survey as a high priority. And it may be that very few of the people who responded were parents. I, I don't know. 
But um, in the interviews, the school people, several of them said, there's a problem with lack of quiet um, space at home for kids to do homework, mm -hmm. and many kids still lack connectivity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. and I didn't say let's do it, but even to explore the fe feasibility and desirability of something takes time, sure. and it would have to involve Kate doing that. So the question is, do we want to respond to that? And this would, this would be, again, a non-circulating time. How do you move the library to the director? Okay. Does it? Volunteer? Could it be director and volunteer? I mean, if you're just exploring the feasibility, that should sure. require her. Yeah, I would endorse that quite frankly. Yeah. Well, would you, the question is, it's in order because I unilaterally added it. I think it's, I mean, you're just talking about exploring it, so I think that's and good. And the third yeah. quarter of next year, because there's plenty coming. Yeah, I think it's a good one to have, personally. Mm -hmm. Well, as I say, in, in, in revising this, I went back to our earlier work, and I thought, oh, that's a strong theme that we haven't even picked up on. And you've got a bad definition, Andrew. And, the, and our, you know, our vision is for all ages. So, all right. So this next part, and we don't have a lot of time left, is really something that we just need to address head on. Um, in the research, the role of libraries as a place for people to connect to their community is a really strong thing. It's emphasized in particular for rural libraries, and it can be a source of what's in our mission, and that is um, community spirit. The more people are connected and know one another, it's highly correlated with overall well-being. So how does the library play that role? I took out what was in there earlier about a weekly dropping time because I thought that pushed the question to a point where there's a, a lot of uh, feeling and discussion right now over what's happening in that area and it's another louder use of a little library. So I just wanted to elevate the discussion to how we address this aspect of our mission. And I think ongoing groups are one way that we do it. Mm -hmm. And Cindy, it gets back to your feeling that you're, you're, you're still really very rooted in a more traditional idea mm -hmm. of what a library is. And I, I'm not saying that in a critical way, just no, absolutely. And pointing that out because this is where the rubber hits the road and where they maybe conflict a little bit, especially with our Which I don't really know. We're looking at provide ongoing opportunities, that's why it's in I see. Okay. for Grafton residents to connect and gather. And you can do that in the context of your topic-oriented groups that are regular and invite people. You can do that in how friendly the library is when people walk in, though Kate says, and she raises this thing yesterday, she's trying, trying, trying how to create separate spaces for a private conversation. Even with the librarian, because you want to check out a book of a sensitive topic, she says, this is a problem. This is like this. Or if people want to chat and, and gather, it sort of disrupts for other people. And so she says, I'm moving bookcases. Finally, she says, I just really can't solve that problem. So, but if this, you know, is part of what we see as our mission, do we see it as part of our mission? It certainly was a high priority in the literature and even in the story. But how do we do it is the question. <coughs> so I just wanted to update the discussion beyond this. Do we have a drop-in group? Do we have Cape Wednesday or not? I don't want to zero in on that. Just. I mean, I personally feel like that's something that this community needs. And the survey demonstrated that. And then the other librarians were saying, you know, the reason people come is it's so friendly and they feel welcome and comfortable in our library. It's the living room of the community. Mm -hmm. I see that phrase everywhere in the literature. Mm -hmm. Well, it's one of those things that's somewhat open-ended. I mean, it doesn't exactly. have to be one thing or another. It's so a matter of priorities and how, you, how the uh, resources fall out. I mean, you can do it in a very 
basic uh, small way, you, know, you can see how it goes and gradually build there and a few years from now maybe it will be uh, something bigger. I mean, it doesn't really have to be a thing that's sort of set in stone, so to speak. It's just, you know, it's too old. And that's where I'm landing, Gary. Um, and, and you feed this into the, the facility discussion. You know, how, how does this yeah. intent yeah. influence what we're looking for in our facilities? But to call on specific ways to do it rather than in general intention, yes, this is part of what we accomplish. It's a little, little sticky right now, mm -hmm. given our building. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that you you questioned. Oh, yeah, we're really stuck in the details of this. Yeah, well, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, it's like somebody read the details. I spent time creating the details. This is an idea that Elena had. And the way I connected it with the libraries, if, if we do, I, and where there's energy, I want to go. You know? So you were interested oh, in this. I not want to go here. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, we don't necessarily need to put this in the plan, but it's, a, it's an idea that helps you meet this, and you connect it to the library with, you know, if you're deciding that this quarter you're going to have a Latin American problem, uh -huh. then you have a Latin American display at the library. Yeah, and, then you, and get the kids' books out with that, and you just make a theme around it, and that would be a library connection, and then have it not the library, <laughs> so you could have it at the library. Yeah. But, you know, so that's why I put that in as an example, and maybe our get out jail free card is option to explore. <laughs> oh. But, I mean, I, did, I got the sense that kicking was on. Oh, she loves the idea. Yeah. So, loves the idea. So this is whether or not whatever funds are raised can come to the library. This is simply a Google event. It's just an event, yeah. It's just an event. It's just yeah, an event. Not a fundraiser. We may eventually turn it into a fundraiser, but we just want to pile it as a... Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Well, you do events like that, just, you know. Donations are always welcome. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For now, we'll just leave it. Yeah. Well, and this really is just my way of saying that your fundraisers have always had a community building uh, yeah. aspect to them. Absolutely. And, and yeah. for example, when we get the takeaway and you as a trustee came and helped fill the bags, it just made a nice connection between the trustees and the goals, and this links it to a library mm -hmm. goal. So that's all that's really about. Mm -hmm. Stop the I don't know that anybody, especially if I do the grant writing, is going to object. Okay, now, that's this is an interesting one for me because you have said to me that there's money for the facilities. And programs. The and program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not, not, uh, we can't get from grants general operating support. Correct. It just, it just it's, uh, doesn't happen. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, and we put the bar relatively higher. I questioned 7,590. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a little too low. I just want, I want our goals to be achievable. Yeah. Oh, we can tell you to tell Of course we can. Oh, absolutely. That is pretty achievable. Oh, totally. Well, so it'll look great when we bring in 25, right? Yeah, um, we're going to have Each grant is directed to a specific objective. Yes. Well, you, you typically yeah. think a specific right. thing that you want to do. For example, this projector. Correct. And the launch pads. Which I guess are a really success. It happened. I think we can do great. Right. So, okay. Are any of those launch pads popular or appropriate? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so. Maybe yeah, you should have seen our kids. For well, one minute before 12. Oh, right for it. <clears throat> Rather than my suggesting the way forward, I'm going to open it. And I usually close right on time, but I really <laughs> wanted to get through this. So I don't feel like we need to, need to talk about timelines because we've already agreed that those could be modified. 
and I'm pushing up the ones that cause the most. Right. Yeah. So, but if they're going to, like, right. 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 Substantially change anything, or was it mostly wording? So well, I changed things based on the input, right. and then bed today when the changes are. So there were significant changes. Mm -hmm. I, don't I, I, I would say I don't know what I would do. I would make a motion to accept this as the strategic plan. Yeah. I would make sure. I would make sure. Uh, but now we can have this. Can, oh, we can have a second and then discussion. Is that how it goes here? The marriage to the moderator. Yeah. Second. Either way. Yeah. I mean, I think that I feel I feel good with the implementation plan as it is. Um, we did need to go back to the the strategic priorities. The priorities and make sure that they're aligned. Well, they are exactly the same. Okay. I thought if we went through the implementation and it prompted our rethinking any of the priorities, we could go back to this, but it didn't. It didn't. No. <coughs> no, so not that we said change what we thought how those priorities should be worded. Yeah. Or ordered. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like we're ready to just accept it. So but, discussion is what would be the next steps. So I think it's fine to address that. Okay, okay so once we accept the plan, where do we go? How does the, maybe your uh, little map that you showed there at the right. ESR kind of addressed it, but it's not clear in my mind what process we go through uh, to start to actually do it and to figure out how we uh, put the flesh on these loans and what iterative type thing actually happens and how that gets decided and who decides and how that gets done. I would say how I'm envisioning that and then stand for correction. But first, do we have agreement to stay for 10 minutes, Fox? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think Andrew's the only one who plans this afternoon. So, first of all, if this group, um, which has all three trustees, can agree, I think in the meeting before we uh, thankfully recruited you, we decided that, that we would approve the plan, we have the authority to approve the plan with no more than one dissenting vote. Does everyone recall yes. that? Yeah. Okay. So if we approve this plan, I think the next steps are to present it at the next trustee meeting, because there will be members of the public there just, mm -hmm. just to run through it, to present it to the select board, um, and then for the trustees to take ownership of oversight of implementation. That is yeah. just that simple. And of modification of the implementation plan as they see fit. Um, but I see it landing in the trustees that yeah. after this. Yeah. Great thanks to to Gary and Cindy for participating and mm -hmm. Elaine. So it's how those things that uh, we like explore and consider right. and all, and all that. Is there a decision point as far as where that takes place or is there a, uh, a process that we use to reevaluate this at various uh, times? Well, that, that, those are great questions. How do the trustees respond? <laughs> um, my thought is that this is a big job to do. There's a lot going on here. And so I would, huh, four people, I would have five. I mean, it's a small yeah. right? <clears throat> and so the answer here is uh, point, and it helps me think about the future. I would like to recall this group and do what we're doing and maybe in that environment start to talk about this is what we've heard, this is the kind of things you're asking. This well, is what you telling us what you think, rather than the three of us going off as though we never Well, not only that, 
the, the, the trustee meeting is only monthly, and it's often a longish you know, um, quotidian <laughs> agenda. It is. Um, so one thing we could do is we could say that this strategic planning group becomes the strategic plan oversight committee and meets quarterly <laughs> to look at these things that we explore and to decide whether to adopt them or not. I, it puts a little Something like that. No, 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 we, I mean, I, we meet once a month, right? So in my mind, I started to think, well, how do we do this and move it along? Well, you've already started to name leads. You have a column called leads. And where I come from, I call it an action item list. Oh, Andrew has volunteered to do whatever it is, X or Y or Z or whatever. We each have something. Because what I see often, I know it happens in this town. Lots of general verbiage and everybody wants it. They all go away and then nothing happens. Right? So I want to avoid that. And so if we have a regular review, for example, I think the next select the trustee meeting should be more or less dedicated to this. And try to cut some of those other things down in terms of size, time. So we can focus on this to get it off the ground in that environment. And then have yeah, every month, how are we doing that, whatever we just decided or decided to do. And periodically, quarterly. I think quarterly is too much. I don't want to agree too, too much. Okay. Well, let's say six months. After six months, we'll have a little bit of in the water, we'll have an idea or not an idea. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be useful. And it puts a little pressure. <coughs> oh, the other thing. The other thing I also is think that. as we is on <coughs> Kate, helping Kate keep on track. Okay. With this plan, it will be useful because she has, as we love people, a lot of good ideas. Mm. Which, could, which they're good ideas, but if, but if they're not the plan, it will get to these things. Mm. So, you know, helping to stay focused on the plan would become part of my job as your ladies in the cake. So that's another. I, mean, I, I would like to take it for once a year, but I think getting this off the ground, maybe doing one in six months, just to. I don't think it's too long. Yeah. But how about four months? I think four at least. Once a year is pretty good because it's going to take a while to get a roll. That's the only thing. How do you figure out where you are? Well, I'd say a year after it's over. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes, yeah, so it's just like one in six months. And then, and then so here we are. <laughs> This is, this, is, this is excellent. So then at that annual meeting, anything that we said, we would assess the feasibility of. We would present what we learned right. from right. that. At right. that annual meeting, to say, okay, this is what we learned. Do we want to fold that in to our plan as something we need to do? Mm -hmm. so. So, so just one thing, I'm, I'm curious about with this. So, <clears throat> This was originally set up to be the strategic planning committee of the library of trustees. Susan was going to help the three trustees figure out what direction they're going in. Just so happened, a few other people were in the room and were invited to be part of the group. And then I was decided to leave some of the planning board as well. We're all elected, except for like, we're an appointed option. Right, thank you. So going forward, let's say in two years, I'm not a select board. We want to do this annual meeting. Good point. By annual meeting, you know, Gary's on the planning board. Are you looking for us specifically because we were part of it from the beginning, or are you looking for representatives from the board? I don't like that question. <laughs> I do not, not like that question. Well, that you point. Well, there are two ways we could go. We could say these two individuals, or we could say this um, oversight committee meeting annually includes the trustees plus the select board liaison, whoever that is, to the trustees and a representative of the planning board. I mean, is the reason we chose the select board person in the planning board because of some authority or some need to have those people those uh, entities on board? Well, I think, I think, case, yes. yeah, I, I think that is the case. I think it just is a no-brainer to me to have a member of the select board 
be on this committee because we need to set votes of approval for much of what we want to do and we want to be on the same page. But for the planning board, I think that had to do, in my mind, a lot to do with this front and center question about facilities mm -hmm. and yes. use of other town resources as a plan issue. Um, at least that was my thought. My memory isn't quite the same. I thought that we decided who should be members. And we were clearly aware of it needs to be more than just us doing a group thing. Mm -hmm. That we needed to have representatives from the other major functions in town. And we went out and invited them. That's how I remember. So I'm going to throw my second part of my thinking here is that <coughs> well, I am potentially being on the finish. So my first concern is that we don't have people present in the recurring meetings, even if it's only one way to do that. Then we've lost all of the history. So you've been part of all the okay. discussion, and you understand, like, right? okay. if we get a new person, they're totally full. Right. They start from scratch. Right. We're going to go through a learning curve process. So I, I'm a little reluctant to just say whoever's in the seat at the time. Although eventually they did not come because they are in the seat. Right. So it's like to cut off all, I don't know, cut you guys off, but I don't know, just sort of pointing out at all. No, but I guess that's a big point. Question, did you get? Well, yes, I know initially that this committee was discussed. It was also discussed with having somebody from, you know, who isn't a town official, somebody who's just a resident right. uh, and doing that. And, and I would like, you know, I've been attending meetings, I would have been like a part of the committee. You know, I would like to see that the committee would branch off and actually have somebody, who, you know, just outside from the community itself um, to be represented. Or maybe a couple people. Um, <clears throat> I think these are very important questions. In light of time, could we summarize by saying that, that we want a body to review progress annually? Can we, uh, and had a good discussion, we should comprise that committee. Can we leave it to the trustees to determine how that happens? I'm just, but, and, and I like your idea, Gretchen, because I think what happened with the planning is we wanted to move ahead and we didn't want the group to become unwieldy, but I still think it's a good idea. To, to have a community uh, representative. I mean, you guys are the ones who invited everybody, so I think it makes sense for you guys to decide the comp composition of the body. And you know, also the makeup of the library trustees may change too. You might have three people who are like, we don't need those all the time. Actually, yeah, thanks for putting that together. We're good. Right. Yeah, that's right. So you know, I would put this on your agenda as chair to determine how what, how we will compose this committee that will meet annually to review progress and the outcome of any feasibility studies that take place as mandated. Mm -hmm. So at the moment we agreed to the recurring process. Yes. And that's all. Yes. But also, but also that the composition needs to be, we have agreed, I think, I'm inferring, that it should be more than the trustees. It should include other representatives as well. I think that's also up to the trustees to determine them. Yeah. So that being the case, we have a motion for the second. Yes. Is there more discussion on any other point related to the motion? Do we need to alter my motion and make it to adopt the implementation timeline and the priority, strategic priority? Mm. Start strategic priorities as you lay them out. Either that or we can, it would be just move to approve the plan in total. Very good. Okay. Do it. That was my motion. Do it. I will second it. Aye. Aye. Congratulations. It was well so done. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will quickly make the changes that we arrived at today and get a total combined PDF with all the parts out to everyone. And I have to warn you now, uh, there's always a howler. There's always a howler. A howler, a typo that says, oh, wow. <laughs> how did she not see that? So the person who finds it gets the box. <laughs> It'll be the Okay, the meeting is